Suella Bradman has ordered an investigation into officers she says are pandering to politically correct causes. Let's see, because she's written a very long letter. Okay, so here is the Home Secretary. Let, it, let us see exactly what she's written in this famous, this famous letter. So, and as I say, there's quite a lot to it. And I actually stop right there, because it's not, a, this is the weird thing, it's not a letter. So I had a look at this. It says, to the Chief Constables of England and Wales, by email. And then she writes her actual, straight, what's going on? So I just mentioned that. Okay, let's see what it actually says. Bring it on. There's quite a lot of praise. I want to thank the police. I'm incredibly proud of the police. I'm, you know, bravery, working hard. You know there's a butt coming. Ready? There it is. <laughs> okay, here we go. Page two is where the butt is, and it's a long butt. There have been cases when we've seen officers attending members of the public's properties over perceived offence at gender-critical views. This sort of thing. We, you, you didn't take action against threats of violence by trans activists directed at biological women, as she puts it. There's quite a lot. There's a, a big paragraph here. Uh, enforcing non-existent blasphemy laws, dancing and fraternising with political marchers. Now, this is the kind of thing particularly she's focusing. Police officers are with, with pride paint on their faces, even a pride car here. So she doesn't like that. She says, I don't like the term institutionally racist, which is unhelpful, and I don't like taking the knee. That's another thing. And I don't like eco-extremism, this thing here where, you know, the police officer gives the vicar some water. So there's a heck of a lot there, and it goes under this word woke. She doesn't use the word woke, but everyone is using it. And I know you don't like that, Nelifer. I have to take a very deep breath before I address uh, everything that you've just said. I think this letter, by the way, this is a review that she's commissioning. So she's using taxpayer money, uh, government time in order to conduct this review. But I feel very strongly that she's made her mind up in everything that you've demonstrated. This tells us more about the Tory party and Swella Braverman specifically than anything else I think I've seen. She's specifically choosing to target a group of people uh, like the police who, th who say themselves that they, try, they need to try and reach out to the local community. So, you don't, so in terms of, I mean, we saw a whole load of examples and she names them as well. If we look at two of them, taking the knee and having pride flags, pride colors, do you think she's right to mind about that? No. So there, I don't here we think go. We're she has see. a right to have an opinion. The look, the police officers are there to do a job. They're there to protect us when we need help. So should or when should we he be doing this, Nella? For look, that where he takes the knee, should he be doing that? I don't think it's the Home Secretary's d uh, uh, job to tell him what to do or not. To what, do. what do you think, I, Angela? Of course, it's her job. But she's the Home Secretary. It falls under her portfolio. She sounds like a begrudged parent, to be honest. No, she sounds like an auntie who doesn't like your piercing or doesn't like the colour of your hair and wants you to get rid. What okay. do you think, Angela? Okay, the police need to operate without fear or favour, OK? I'm not... I think she's bang on the money on this one. I'm, I'm fed up to the back teeth about the virtue signalling, the burnishing of credentials, the proving that we're PC and we're on it and we're inclusive. I want a law enforcement... Um, group, the police. I want them to be there to maintain law and order and to protect and invest against crime and investigate crime. What happens... Let me show you a clip, Andrew. Hang on, let's just look at another one here. This is, this is the pride end of things. So here we have, this is 2017. You don't like that? Right, I'll tell you for why. First of all, I want them to be doing their job. I don't want the police to be a political entity because by allying themselves with this particular cause, it becomes a political issue. It has nothing to do with what I feel about Pride or Black Lives Matter or whatever. It's about the fact that the police should be apolitical. Here's the other thing that I think is really, really important. There's a tremendous irony in talking about inclusivity. If your views don't align themselves with some of the things that the police are engaging with, like Black Lives Matter, like Pride, then you are not going to have confidence in the police. You need them to be a neutral entity mm, that can reach out to people and, can, and know how to communicate with the public, but leave the politics to others. Let's also not, like... We have to understand, the Metropolitan Police has been in special measures for years because it's, it's deemed to be incompetent at doing its job. Well, she the, doesn't like the phrase institutionally racist, by the way. Which, which, I, is, I, which is fact. 
which is actual well, she says it's very fact unhelpful. made by a review that the Met Commission. So the Met themselves <laughs> have to, have agreed by uh, that they are institutionally racist. I, I want to make one thing clear. I agree with you. No officer should get down on their knee whilst they're wearing the uniform. They, oh. may, they may believe that. However, this disparaging, infantilizing, no, 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 a finger wagging that Swella Braverman is doing is just for political okay. points. Right. And I won't see, but I can't see. you agree with Angela that. on the other stuff then. Okay, Michael in Peterborough, hi. Morning all, how are you? Well, I'm, um, I, I'm okay. I mean, she really throws the book at them on page two of that letter, doesn't she? And she's absolutely right. I, I totally agree with um, Angela that um, too many police and too many individuals are now affiliating themselves with whatever cause to try and make themselves look more virtuous or more trendy. When the reality is they're police, the only colour that matters in the police should be blue. And they should focus on doing their jobs rather than trying to affiliate themselves. How many causes can you affiliate yourself with? There's that many causes out there. They'll run out of badges eventually. But, yeah, but, but given, given the, the problems that, say, the Met in London have had in the way that they're perceived yeah. as being racist... They're, they're not it, racist. Um, that's like me saying that everybody, everybody at Channel 5 is vegetarian. It's a nonsense. Um, you can't you can't put a blanket claim. Well, like there was that. a judge, uh, the judge who who did the McPherson report in the nineties said they were institutionally racist. So that's all I'm that going was, by. That, that was the nineties, and that was the nineties, and that was after uh, that sad Stephen Lawrence case. Yeah. I mean, I'm in Cambridgeshire. Not all police. We don't all live in London, and we're not all metropolitan police. For sure. Um, the police have a tough job, and they have a job to consider that they are basing it to be impartial. And if you're not impartial, you shouldn't be in the job. Okay, Michael. Thank you so much, Christine in Middlesbrough. Hi. Morning, Al. Do you think it's all right for them to, to wear the pride painting, for example? Because there's not, you know, there's not a lot of people surely can object to the values of that, at least. Well, I'm one of the objects. Oh. The police aren't there to, to parade around in colours, paint the cars. Where's the respect going to be if they start doing all things like this? I mean, I might be old fashioned, but I want a policeman to be a policeman. Not a man dressed up in fancy colours and getting on his knee and doing a jig in the middle of the street. That's not how you're going to get respect. Well, they, they, there was a thing that happened job. about 20 years ago where they stopped calling themselves a police force and they started calling themselves a police service with the idea that they can only police if the public help them. And this is part of connecting, isn't it, Christine? Not, not in this way. They connect in a more respectful way than getting on the knee and dancing around in fancy colours. I'm sorry, I'm losing respect for the policeman who does that. I want him out there in his uniform, protecting me against burglars, murderers. That's what a policeman's there for. That's what we expect of a policeman. All right, not thank you. dancing in the street. There, thank you so much. I mean, this is the thing that people do. They do, a lot of people say they want to go back to life on Mars policing. In other words, the sort of thing you saw where people got, they're probably scared of the police. Love that show. I think <laughs> Suella Braverman has more important things to deal with in the failing police system in this country than whether they're wearing face paint or whether they've got the people. right badge. I agree it matters to people, but the fact that the majority of rape cases in this country aren't uh, prosecuted or aren't actually investigated should worry them more. Mm. Is it, so, yeah, maybe that's a good point, Angela, that actually it's, it's completely on the margins. It's, it's those so-called culture wars where you have a big row about nothing. No, I think, look, the thing is, I'm sorry to use this phrase again, but they're not mutually exclusive. It doesn't mean that because there is a court backlog, partly from the pandemic, partly because the, the justice system is creaking. Yes, the, there is an issue with, with cases being investigated. We've seen the way the culture has turned in terms of getting defendants into the dock after uh, after murderers won't, but won't appear, refuse to be appear in court because of sentencing. Justice needs to be, what I'm saying is, Justice needs to be felt. If you're driving and you see a police car behind you, you immediately think, is it my speed? Or oh, yeah, as a, as a teenager in a car, if there was a police car near yeah. me, I was terrified. Right. Mm. I want to have that feeling with a police officer because, not because I'm doing anything wrong, because the person in the street so who's doing anything wrong will feel that. So can I, so can I ask you that. then... That infantilizing letter she wrote, almost wagging her finger at the police service, does that make you trust the police more? She's, she's entitled to wag her finger. She's but the not boss. in public, like, I, I agree she's the boss. Precisely because she's the boss. I agree. Precisely in public. I it agree has to be transparent. No, honestly, I do agree she's the boss. And of course, I believe that the police should keep their opinions to themselves. There's clearly a failure of policy here on what, what the police services are doing around the country. I don't ignore that. But what I'm saying is, writing these letters, these cheap shots, 
shots at the police no, service. I, okay, it's I hear you. Win them on side. Okay. Not alienating. It's not them. a question right. of winning on side. It's just saying don't do it. All right.